Do School Better, a podcast for people who want to transform education. My name is Doris Corda, and this season we're going to take you behind the scenes into my entrepreneurship course at Hawkins School. Allison Tanker and I discuss the day-to-day of teaching a rigorous interdisciplinary course where students learn the critical skills they'll need to be successful in the world. In this episode, I talked to Allison about the first week of this class. Doris! Oh my god, are you tired yet? I'm exhausted! (laughs) Is it time for winter break? Right. Has the semester over yet? It feels like it's already been a month and here we are one week into the first week of school. I know, it's really tiring, isn't it? I know. Well, I know the beginning of this course as well is really intense because of the experience the students have to go through early on. You know, you call it de-schooling that's happening early here. But this week, you know, really coming back and remembering where these students are when they first join us. Of course, I remember at the end of the semester. I know you were surprised. To like, wait, we, don't they know this already? Right. <laughs> and forgetting how much we, how we have to really start back at the basics. And it's hard. The de-schooling, you forget. And it's kind of like uh, having a puppy. It's a good thing they're so cute or you would never have one. <laughs> it's a good thing that you end the last year when the students are at the end of the semester so incredibly awesomely having just a great time with all of it mm-hmm. and that you forget how brutal de is. <laughs> <laughs> but let's dive into it. Let's talk a bit more about what's going on sure. in the past week. I especially want to focus a bit on Friday and sure. the work that goes on early in this experience for the students uh, I know is at this point you've been doing this for 20 years I mean really this method you've developed has been throughout your whole career but this is now I, I don't even know how many times you've run this course in this way but there's some patterns that emerge in the first yeah. week and I came into Friday with a sense of what we were going to do but I, I'd love to like get our heads back there. What, where were you coming into Friday, recognizing where the students were in their growth and what we needed to do? Well, it was funny because you and Tim at the end of Friday, <laughs> when the, kid, <laughs> the kids left, and you just yeah, said, we were exhausted. What, what did you just do <laughs> with those kids? <laughs> so, um, okay, just to put it in perspective. So, Tuesday was the first day of school. And they have absolutely no idea what this is about, what they're going to have to do, and they've never done things like this. Yeah, no and business background, nothing. no entrepreneurial background. No, it's not, and we're not trying to squeeze an MBA into a semester, and we're not. And Wednesday, and we don't have them all day every day. People think we have, we don't, like not even close. So Wednesday, uh, we. Tuesday we have them, we tell them some basic things about the class and I do some other stuff with them. And then Wednesday we took them to their first business challenge. Mm -hmm. Put them on a bus, they had no idea where they were gonna go and they go meet, you know, Evan from Peaceful Fruit uh, who has a fruit snack made purely out of three fruits, fruit leather Mm -hmm. and wants to and, the ch- and they learn about the acai berries and farmers, and they learn mm-hmm. about his mission of doing well and doing good, mm-hmm. and they see him, they learn about it, they learn everything, and they're given their challenge, which is, and by the way, it's a, I mean, how great is that, what he's doing? And To be honest, I, I was pretty impressed how Articulately, he described his work to these students who. Wonderful. He did a great job. He did a great job, but to explain a social enterprise in such a way where he has a layered uh, yeah. level of social impact yeah. built into this business yeah. from the people in, in Suriname that he's working with, the acai farmers you mentioned, to the people with disabilities that are packaging the goods Tenet and creating now, jobs for them. He's scaling, he's employing. While trying to create more healthy fruit snacks in the in the general product market. I mean, it's just imp- in pretty incredible so that he crazy. was able to connect all of that for the students in a way that they were very engaged. They were really right. overwhelmed. And, right. They <laughs> were over- but he was, he was great. And he also, he's a fabulous person. He's incredibly talented, skilled, bright, has Passionate. all this stuff. And he chose to do this. 
And anyway, so we take them in the day two and they're given their challenge, which is how can Peaceful Fruits and Evan win the US market? What, what should he do next to win the market? And he worded it that way and then added, what is, what are the, how did he word it? What are the right, what's the right message for the right ears? Right. Right? Okay. So there, if you put yourself back into being a 16 or 17 year old who's been in school and still is in school and has no experience with it, they leave very, very, very passionate about Evan, about peaceful fruits, about the mission, and having absolutely no idea what to do next. Right, right. And looking at us wide-eyed, like, like what's the great. answer? And give me the recipe. And right. what are my okay. directions? How do right. I? So help this him? is the second day of class, <laughs> and over time, we've learned some things. We when we say we've developed a bunch of systems, so over time. Um, I've developed a bunch of systems, and in particular, how do you use, what are the systems you set up curricularly, instructional practices, assignments, the whole bit, for the first experience they're ever having with a learning stuff by working on a real problem, okay? A real world problem that doesn't have an answer in the back of the book. And then there are other systems we developed that carry on throughout the whole semester. Mm -hmm. But as you've seen in this entrepreneurship class and in the classes that are the educators we've trained do, a lot of these basic methodologies and foundational skills, they have to learn in the first challenge so that they have those in their toolkit. Mm -hmm. So, what And it's not that you're teaching them those methodologies or giving them those tools before they receive the challenge. They have the challenge by the time yeah. they realize, wow, we need some tools to solve this. Which is, by the way, it's super important because the whole mm -hmm. point is that, um, the whole point is that they're learning by doing and the reason they're learning by doing is that they need to do and so they figure out, ooh, I need to learn this to be able to do this. For Evan's challenge. For Evan's challenge. So we start by they've got a problem that matters to them, which is Evan and his business and scaling it so that he can, you know, do create more jobs and, and yeah. all mm -hmm. this stuff mm -hmm. and they're totally just three weeks later they're going to present their solutions to Evan and they have to be well researched and evidence based and they know nothing and they have no skills and they have no anything to be able to figure it out and that's why we have them mm -hmm. and um, we uh, I get asked many times I love that you brought that up I get asked so much well what do you do to prepare them right and I my answer is always well if I did a bunch of stuff to prepare them that's what regular school would look like the reality is second day they're thrown in and they care and therefore, they're gonna learn a lot of stuff because they need to use it. And we have tons of evidence now that in order to learn something and be able to use it in other contexts, you have to apply it, and then you have to reflect on it. So that's the kind of method, the model that mm -hmm. we use. Anyway, so we know the basics that they need to learn early on. We know they need to learn lean, Launchpad, which is scientific method for today, mm -hmm. customer development. So we assign Udacity and they learn it along the way and they realize as they're experiencing the first challenge, oh, I need that. It gives them language, it gives them a methodology for having a guess, testing it, massive and foundational. We need to give them some design thinking kinds of Workshops. Tool, tools. So we do workshops and teach them the, how to interview, build an archetype, all this stuff a lot of teachers are using and it's fabulous. Empathy mapping, all, all of that. that stuff. We teach them some, some uh, you know, Roger's curve of innovation, etc. The other thing that we teach them early on, and there are several items like this, but one of the things they need to learn ASAP is they really need to get conversant with the business model canvas. They're mm -hmm. not gonna learn it well. They're teenagers, they've never done it, but they need to be conversant. And just watching videos about it or reading about it isn't gonna cut it. And so what we did on Friday was this, there's certain things we change a lot. We do a lot of different things as things happen. There's mm -hmm. certain things we do every single time. 
and a lot of those show up in the first three, four weeks. Friday was the BMC day. So what we do is um, I say to the students to find a business that you're into. That's it. It could be Nike, and there's pretty much one Nike every Sunday, <laughs> right? Um, could it be. could be the bakery store down the street. It can be whatever you want, just one you're into. Um, we're sending you the PDF from Alex Osterwalder's business model generation that describes the BMC and all the blocks, you know, customer segment, value, prop, channels, key resources, key activity, all that stuff. Uh, it defines them, gives you, etc. I even mentioned, by the way, you can look online, there's tons of stuff on the business model mm -hmm. canvas, etc. And what you're going to do tomorrow on Friday, in our case, um, is you're going to have your first experience presenting to the class um, by presenting your business using post-it notes and placing them on the BMC. One or three items per block, and you're gonna tell the story of the business, um, three minutes, using the business model canvas. And the reason that, um, and by the way, there are also videos online, tons of them, tons of people do this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they do this at incubators and they do this, Alex Osterwalder in his, in his Team. Uh, mm -hmm. workshops does it and has adults do it. It's not, it's not like our idea to do this. But the reason that it's really crucial in this course early on is many of them are very afraid of presenting. So it gets that done and over early. Mm -hmm. They, um, they are, uh, we're going to give them feedback. Well, I should say what I tell them beforehand. I say, by the way, you're going to do this tomorrow. You're all going to be presenting your business in three minutes using post-its. And they get a look of total fear on their face. And I say, of course you don't know what the business model canvas is. And of course you have no idea and you have no experience and you've never done it before. And no, we're not lecturing on it, right? We're not spending three hours lecturing on the business model canvas. Customer giving, segments, right, channels. Defining them mm -hmm. all for you, give, giving you examples of how to do this. We understand that. So we're gonna have you do it tomorrow. And because you're in high school, because you have no experience, because you have no clue about the business model canvas and I've never used it before, the first people who raise their hand and volunteer to do it are probably gonna be horrible. <laughs> They're gonna be horrible. And why are they gonna be horrible? And somebody says, because they've never done it before and we've never done it and we don't know what it, and I said, exactly. And what's gonna happen is that we're gonna give you feedback and the first ones are gonna be the worst. And we're gonna give it especially a lot of feedback to those people and the rest of you are gonna be in the room. Let me ask you something. What do you think, and it's gonna be in some random order by volunteer, do you think the fifth person is gonna be better than the first person? Everybody nods their head, absolutely, yes it is. Okay, what about the eighth person? What about the 15th? Oh yeah, okay. Why are they gonna be better? Well, because they'll watch the first people and they'll hear what you say and they'll learn from it. So what happens in that? And so that's, that's what we do to start. So they go through and sure enough, they get better and better and better and we give less and less feedback and the whole thing actually, the first one and the second one and the third one, maybe even though they're supposed to be three minutes each, it may be combined, it's 20 minutes, mm -hmm. but then the rest go really fast. And if you, have a, if you don't have time to do all of them in a period, it doesn't even matter because once you get past the first three or four, the rest will do theirs later, no big deal. It can be two weeks later, depending on how much time you have in your class. Of course, they should all get their turn. But it's, so what happens in, let's talk for a minute about what just that does. Mm -hmm. They, first of all, learn that I can learn this stuff 
I can go in with my stickies and I am, the first people are, they're 16 and 17. They're comp what they put in as a channel or a key activity, mm -hmm. or they have no idea, right? Right. I mean, do you remember the early ones, what they say is a cost structure item? Right, oh, always. Yeah, they're very confused with the left side versus the right side of the canvas, how the relationships between the blocks right. work. They have stickies in right. the wrong blocks. Right, but because of the way we've set it up before, they come in, so they're teenagers, which are the most, it's, it's kind of being an, a teenager's probably the most insecure state, right? Mm -hmm. And oversensitive and the, the thing they all say, almost every one of them says, except the kid who's in debate, on the first day they say, <laughs> the thing they're most afraid about is presenting. Presenting, absolutely. And so they, they do it, they realize that they, that the feedback someone's getting, if it's critical, is actually a learning experience. It's not personal. They don't turn bright red in the face like a teenager normally would. The first day of class, I set up, do you know, remember where they- where Oh, they, the role play that you did? Yeah. Oh yeah, let's talk about that. Actually, that was yeah. great setup for what then happened on Friday's BMC feedback. Yeah, so the first day of class, now it's first day of class, we don't have a lot of time and there's a whole lot to say because Things are, and I always do this on the first day. Maybe do it a little differently, but the role play was, okay, um, Allison, Tim, Doris, and Fiona, we all work together. We all work together and we actually like each other. We do a lot of stuff together. And I put each of you, Allison, Tim, and Fiona, physically, I use students, and I put them in their own office. And I say, let's say this happened. Doris goes into Allison one day and I walk in and I say, oh my gosh, I have such a great idea. I need, I'm so excited. I want to tell you my idea. Blah, 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 here's my idea. What do you say back? Oh, sounds great, Doris. That's awesome, Doris. Good for you. That's awesome. Right, and I leave and I'm all excited because Allison thinks I have a great idea and I'm so excited about my idea. In the meantime, Allison's thinking, okay, that is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. And Allison goes over to Tim, and what do you do with Tim? I talk to Tim about how that idea is going nowhere. That She's so, her idea is so stupid. You like me, so you're not necessarily saying, I mean, I'm being kind to myself. You're not saying Doris is stupid, maybe, but you're saying <laughs> that idea is so stupid, I can't believe she came up with it, and they, you guys have a great time analyzing and diagnosing all of the different ways in which that was a stupid idea. And then I turn to the kids and I say, did Allison, who actually is my friend and likes me, did she have my back? I mean, she certainly, I was excited and she made me feel good. Did she have my back? And they all, every time say no. And I say, why didn't she have my back? And they get into this whole, they start reflecting on the fact that to have my back. Means to give you some honest feedback yeah, in that moment. Yeah. And then I say, did what just happened here, do you see this? Do you see that happen in your day-to-day -day at school? And all of them vigorously shake their heads. And I say, you see it all the time, don't you? Where there's a conversation between two people or one person in a group, and that person or that group gives that person great feedback until they walk away, and then the trashing starts. And they're high school kids, so they go, yeah, yeah, we see that all the time. And I say, okay, so on Friday, you're gonna do your BMCs, you're gonna give presentation, and here's a question. You're gonna give presentation about something you don't know about at all, and you've never presented on it, you have no cl clue, you have no reason to have a clue. Do you want us, instructors, to just say, oh, that was wonderful, and give you a great, quietly, separately, but just say that's wonderful. Or do you want us to tell, give you honest feedback? And they say, no, we want you to give us honest feedback. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, and it's gonna be hard because it's your first time. Um, but that sets the stage for this class where they're gonna present every week mm -hmm. and we're gonna be giving them feedback, honest feedback. 
when it was interesting, even on Friday, after I think we got to maybe five or so by that point, that we said, who wants to go next? And all of a sudden, the chain starts to happen. Well, I want to go. I'll go. I'll go after so and so. I'll go after him. I'll go after her. Oh yeah. And I had to laugh that once we broke that open, and they realized they could withstand that feedback. Right. They could learn from that. They were all interested in then going to get their own feedback. And truly, I mean, that activity is outstanding so early on in the course. Because like you say, they get out of their comfort zone by having to present when they're super fearful of that. They have to deal with what it means to have constructive criticism or feedback given to them early. And I also love, just as we're getting to know these students, it's a real insight into who they are simply by right. the businesses they choose right. and what they choose to right. highlight. You know, some people pick a family yeah. business. Others will yeah. choose some big global conglomerate yeah. and yeah. some will choose, you know, something down the street. And it just gives a little insight into what they care about, what their interests are. Right. And I, I find that super helpful as a, as a teacher to right. be involved in that activity early and help them understand what it means to be in this class. I agree. And then think about the other things that wrap into that one activity. And we could talk about all the rest of what we did on Friday, but just that one activity. So there's only but one book required for them to read coming into the class, just one. And it's Mindset by Carol Dweck. And it's the idea, and I always say, well, so what's the big idea about mindset? And they, different people say different things. And then eventually someone says that if you work hard at something, you can get better. And I say, bingo, that's it. That's the point. Mm -hmm. And that's the framing of this entire class. So what happens in this one BMC exercise, and the other thing we haven't talked about, is that as they present their businesses and they get the wrong thing in the wrong category, okay, we're able to talk about what variable and fixed costs are. Like, mm -hmm. well, what do you think is a variable cost? What do you think is a fixed cost? Oh, what is a channel? What does distribution mean? What, what does it mean to be a multi-sided market? What does it mean? So there's all this stuff mm -hmm. that comes in. What is, what strategic mean? What does it mean to be strategic? They eventually, and this is a great exercise, oh, to, uh, to understand what matters most. Yeah. So if you're putting five, eight, ten items in value proposition for a business, <laughs> okay, and there are features like, so there's so much learning that happens. So when we reflect afterwards with the students, and remember this is, so this is, school started Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You're not with them all day, every day. And Wednesday they go see the business. Thursday we had a teeny like one block and mm -hmm. have them, I always have them break down the challenge, think through the yeah, and I say what I want you to come coming right out of meeting Evan and seeing the business. If you were to pr create the outline now of what you want to present in three weeks, do it now so that they can work backwards from there, and it gives them a a frame for the whole thing, mm -hmm. a structure. So then it's just the fourth day we do this BMC, mm -hmm. and afterwards. When I say, okay, so what did you learn from doing that? So now we're in the reflection part. They learn, first of all, by experiencing it, mm -hmm. that getting authentic, real feedback, they actually realize, oh, instead of like not wanting it and being afraid of it, I want it. And we've seen they crave it over the course of the mm -hmm. course. They learn that they can learn stuff by applying it and using it. They learn a lot of real stuff that they're going to have to know. Content. Mm -hmm. Content, knowledge that they'll know. It's so funny. People talk about soft skills. I think I've mentioned this before. I'm starting to become allergic to that terminology because it suggests that something like... Uh, communicating effectively yeah that that's a soft skill it's a nice to have that's mm -hmm. really what the connotation right? right it's a the implication it's a it's a nice thing but it's not hard it's not it's not like a hard skill like being able to use a drill okay or being able to differentiate a you know an equation or whatever and what also these guys start learning really early on is that you can 
take on learning these soft skills as an academic subject. It's mm. just as academic and therefore not personal to learn to present well, to learn to communicate well, to learn to collaborate well, how to be a good team member. They, th that very first BMC exercise is when we start setting the stage for a completely different, not only model for academic learning, but mindset about what academic learning is even about. Thanks for listening to this episode of Do School Better. We would love to hear from you, so please leave us a comment or a review. And if you're interested in learning more, check out wildfire-education.org.